Hi, how you doing? I'm Luke. And I'm Hayne. And right now we're looking at the statue of Lao Kawan and his sons. Man, isn't that name just a tongue twister? As far as the subject matter goes, uh, Lao Kawan was actually a Trojan priest that realized that the Trojan horse during the war was a trick uh, because it was filled with Greek soldiers. And he tried to warn the city, but Athena, a Greek goddess, actually sent serpents to punish him and his sons, and that's what's going on. So the artists behind this is actually Athanodoros, Hagesandros, and Polydoros. Yes, and we're getting this information mostly from the Roman historian Pliny, who wrote that these three men were the artists behind the statue that he saw, which describes Laocoon and his sons. But... It's a very inaccurate report because the statue he's describing comes 300 years later right. from when this one was carbon dated. Right. And there's a lot of difference between like when they speculated that the work was made and the actual time of activity for these artists. So it's kind of a messy past, really. Yeah. But... So right now we've kind of landed on the fact that this was made somewhere between 40 and 20 BCE. The piece went un discovered for a long period of time, and Felice de Ferdis actually stumbled upon this in his vineyard uh, in 1506 AD and uh, informed Pope Julius II about the statue being in his vineyard. Right, and Michelangelo actually showed up to the excavation site, and right after it got completely excavated, it was brought to the Vatican City. And it's actually still there right now, and it's always been there ever since. Yep, it's resting in a little alcove in the actual Vatican. Right. The material used to create the statue was actually Parian marble, which is a fine-grained, semi-trulucent, pure white, and entirely flawless marble. Um, and it was popular during the classical era on the Greek island of Paros in the Aegean Sea. It's actually 208 centimeters by 163 centimeters by 112 centimeters. Now, in American terms, that's actually... Six feet, ten inches, <laughs> five feet, four inches, and three feet, eight inches. Right. So, as you can see, this is really a massive statue, required a lot of marble, and it was believed to originally be made out of one piece, but it's actually made out of many pieces. Right. So, what style would you say that this piece is in? Um, well, if I had to guess, I would say maybe classical Greek? No, you're totally wrong. Oh, well, so all right then. It's, <laughs> it's actually listed as um, being in the Hellenistic Baroque style, um, which also is associated with the Pergamene style. And oh. it's actually made a great impression on Italian artists. One of the most notable, actually, is Michelangelo. He's actually particularly known as being impressed by the scale of this thing. Yeah, he, he was there as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he saw it being on Earth. Right. And, you know, he really, he really implemented this style, especially into the depiction of his male figures. Right. You can just tell by the muscle structures of his paintings. Right. Um, very similar to this style. It's, it's very, very mathematical, too. Yes, yes, very mathematical. It's actually very interesting, speaking of the Pergamene style, uh, if you actually look at the Greek altar of Zeus and Athena, which is located in Pergamon, right. um, you can see that the facial expressions and the style are almost extremely identical to right. this statue we see here. You, the images are coming out at us, there's a lot of emotion right. and turbulence, and it's very wild and crazy. And very expressive, definitely. Yes, you can see the emotion on all their faces, especially Lao Guan's son, who is mm -hmm. trying to escape, and he looks he looks in danger, he looks scared. Right. And there you have it. That's Lao Guan and his sons in a nutshell. Right. So, thanks for joining us. My name is Hayne. And I am Luke. And this was our presentation. Yep. Signing off. Bye.